Bam! Blast off! And here we go. This is Flash. Sweet. And Gramsy. Say hi, Gramsy. Gramsy. Over here at the dork table on a reallibertymedia.com for your listening entertainment this afternoon on the 28th of December 2019. And I It's the last Saturday of 2019. See, I host I got me a co-hostage. Ha, ha, ha. And it's the last dork table of 2019. See Gad and Gadzooks. Yeah, and if I go through with a show on on uh, what Tuesday, then I would have what the last aired show of the decade. What do you think? Ooh. I could do an epic story about my hernia operations. <laughs> oh, hey, there you go. That sounds. Why is it called a hernia, not a hemia? Not a hizia. I... Could... Women get them too, don't they? Yeah, because it's a tear in your intestine. So, oh, I thought know. it was a tear in the in the uh, well, that's, diaphragm. Okay, well, I had um, four of them, and three of them were in my uh, intestinal tract, and one was behind my belly button. And according Ooh. to the doctor, these little fuckers can hide from the, uh, the however they find them, whatever their method of seeing them is, they hide behind other things. So, of course, I had my own doctor once when I was still seeing one of those idiots. Look me right in the face and tell me, you are an enigma. And I went, wow, maybe you're just a fucking idiot. And I don't need this. <laughs> Wish I would have listened to my intuition then, but I didn't. I, I trusted the system instead. Mm, see, I I did that too. But now, mm. but now I read memes on mine. Oh, that's a very entertaining. <laughs> yes, and... I think I will reread the one that I just shared in the RLM post as soon as I can find it. And the one that I read to you. Oh, well, yeah. shit, it's not showing up now. Uh -oh. Damn, it. Damn it. Where'd it go? Uh -oh. Okay. In any case, Anything. one guy says to the other guy, you know what? I just turned my gun in to help end gun violence. And the other guy looks at him and says, so did you cut off your dick to help end rape? So, she she said rape everybody. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, well, I know. It, I said the R word. Right it is, after the yeah, word. but it's about the same idea. I mean, uh, see, it's just like yeah. we, you know, people have exaggerated shit through film for so long that I think it's warped our collective that we see things that are truly just they're fantasy. There's no fucking way in the 21st century that any of this is ever didn't really take place without coercion from the state. People don't do these things alone. They don't even do them in groups, but you can find a movie. <laughs> somewhere, you can find a groupie? somewhere in Idaho, there's a guy right now building a time machine in his basement. I guarantee it. Hey, I have a niece and her husband that live in Idaho. Could it be them? Could be. <laughs> see, see, I have, I have this like, could be. Yeah, I have this psychic power. I can read your mind. You can lie about it all you want. <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh well. Should we say hi to all the Boston I, bodies over here in the RLM? I was wondering when you were going to get around to that. Hey, well, Grimner, look what we could do without you. After. Yeah. Or after. Woo woo. Yeah. And Beatles even listening in. We're, in any case, un over here. unsupervised. I know. <laughs> in the RLM, right up top, we got Barman, the most wonderful spot in the whole wide world. Closely followed by Beatles. Beatles. He says his doctor can kiss his ass. It's mm. a uh, KMA moment. There you go. We also got Grimner, the RLM god, don't you know? Grimner. Mostly followed by the lovely Moose Coil. And last night, Moose they Coil. did their predictions show on uh, the Freaker's Ball. And I'm going to have to listen to the podcast because I, I was a tired puppy last night. And I went to bed early. Mm. So I will have to listen to the podcast. Anyway, I would recommend to... that you do that, Miss. Do that you immediately. Exactly. Okay. I, I will do that probably while I'm baking. Strap those headphones to your ears and put it up to 11, I say. 
Wow, all the way up to 11? Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. In any case, I got I got mine set on 23 right now. Um, <laughs> That's how old I am. My my shit only went up to 10. <laughs> oh, the, there you yeah, go. When I was young. Now I'm old. Now it goes up There's to 100. Big pages here as well as hey. am. Hi. And we got some Asmodeus Asmo. And you know, the other day while Ooh. I was kind of trundling along and passing by and all that fun stuff, I saw that Asmodeus Asmo was speaking. <laughs> I was in the midst of and talking with my mother because yeah. she's been on this kick of calling me three and four times a day. <laughs> I can't figure out how to use my phone. Mom, what did you call me on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe maybe she's just having uh, like momentary memory things. I do then. Forget what I'm – and but, the older I get, the more – ridiculous the things I forget are. <laughs> well, it's a different brand of flip phone, and so she's having some issues with it, but yeah. she can call me back because she can do the last number dial. <laughs> <laughs> Old school. <laughs> Redial. Yep. 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 What the kids won't Funny. ever learn is how to, you know, there ain't no time to do it right, but there's always time to do it over. That's right. That's right. Okay, Grimmy said I need to listen to it on BitChute, which, yes, I will do that, Grim. Real um, loud, too. Real loud. Really loud. Like, really I'll crank loud. it up to, crank like, that. 30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also see Chalcedony is here as well as Free Enslaved. Hey, Free, how you doing, hon? Long time no talkie. Uh, I am here. Gramsy. I also see Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is Java in the Doctor house. Two. Mm, Java. Mm. I have a cup of Java. I've and you know two. what? Mm. I have a cup that my daughter made for me for Christmas. Mm. And on one side it says nobody's perfect. And on the other side it says I am nobody. Thank you, Cowboy Tech, for that idea, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah. Clever yeah. man, Mr. CT. Yeah, that's right. I also see Ponder Gander is here as hey, well. Hey, Poopster, the mighty Poopster, and Prince. And they have a show on the RLM on Thursday evenings. I also see Rob Wikes is here. Hey, the Rob. The Bubbler. I know, the Bubbler dude. He's always firing up that Bubbler. And we are ever so grateful <laughs> for it. Even if it's the cybernetic bubbly. Uh. Mm. It works for me. Mm. Trust. Ooh, I got to do this right. Trust no one. Ooh, that's so fun to do. Hi, trusty no one feller. How you doing? Vanna White is here, the wonderful letter turner of the RLM channel. We got a Vin E going on Another as Vinny. well. Hey, and a weather dork, which is just pretty appropriate for the weather out here right now. <laughs> It's cold enough to snow, but it's raining. <laughs> Talk about dorkular. <laughs> that was, um, <laughs> made no sense. Cold enough to I snow, know. but it's raining. No, if if it was cold Isn't enough to weird? snow, it would be snowing, not raining. Rain but is it's not. when it's not Actually, cold when enough you to look snow. On the thing, it, says, huh. it says it's 30. Well, my thing says it's 38 degrees, but hmm. it feels like 34, and it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's not even freezing rain. It's just rain, but it's... Stop it, it's like <laughs> you know when you step outside, it's like fire. Yeah, you know you know how I deal with that. How? When I go outside, I wear apparel around my naked core, you know, body. Because huh. if I didn't, I would find magnetic south. I think <laughs> quickly. <laughs> I know. Farmer and I were talking about that the other day. I said, isn't it funny? We get cold. You go turtle and I go pop-up timers. Yeah, right? isn't that something? The I laws know, of weird. nature are so unfair. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like whatever it is that you require for happiness in life, the laws of nature go, eh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do it like this instead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where, yeah. where, where were Never you? Never mind. Hi, Phantom. We got a Phantom in here. <laughs> Not the Phantom. Uh, the Phantom, oh, as well as CC66 mm-hmm. and some Chascura going oh, on. The Chascura. There you go. Yeah, and looky there, we got the lovely Cycle. Hey, here. honey. Hi, 
I've got to say Gordian Noodle, too, so may you be touched by that Gordian Noodle. That, that almost sounds pervy. I don't know whether to tell you to keep your noodle off me or not. <laughs> I think it went turtle. Sir, you better. <laughs> oh, boy. Is she making noodles? Is she making pasta no, for supper? She just controls the noodles around here, I think. Oh. <laughs> She's a noodle control. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask it's a long story i don't want to know <laughs> la, 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 la. hi the dork cake hey mental how the hell are you hey sweetie hey. i also see duh is here which pretty much Ooh. describes the conversation we've had so far today so far yeah but we, so uh, far. we haven't gone in which is a low in and stuff yeah we're we're working on it. we're working <laughs> We got some end civ going on too, because we're going to end civilization. By golly! Oh yeah, that's what we're going to. Of course, do. you know, I look around me and I see a lot of this civilization that you know, like on Twitter and that kind of stuff, and I go, "Damn, that's what passes for civilization." Yep. <laughs> I just as soon end it. Those are the smart people too, by God and country. Those are the oh, ones that's... representing us in the in the public eye for our own good. Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make it good and everything, and you go, be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Mike. I, I, I stand corrected. Continue. <laughs> I see Flash. Somebody's here. That's 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 this other fellow. Hello, on the alternate radio. me. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, we got a frumpy and a frumpy uh, white. Uh, double a different. double frump. Uh, What's it? See? That's yeah, two F's. Wrong. We got two F's for the dork table <laughs> before it even <laughs> starts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hi, Goober. A... <laughs> Hi, Goober. <laughs> <laughs> we got Papa <laughs> and Goober. <laughs> I'm telling you. And we got a Gromit going on. Hey, <laughs> Gromit. <laughs> as well as JJ's, no, 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 JJ's, that's the cautious feller <laughs> with the kilt, and I hope the wind <laughs> don't blow up that kilt, because... Man, he would go turtle too. Man, I also you ain't see pop a pop a pop. And I'm butthole too. Here. How does your butthole pucker in the cl- I, it would be horrible. That would be like double and dim. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just let me go off this charge. Don't try me again. <laughs> First we go turtle, then we go pucker. <laughs> yeah, there you That's go. kinda like a hangman's thing, isn't it? Yeah, oh well. Absolutely. Are you having okay. fun, little Miss A? Grim wants to know what's so civil about civilization anyway. I haven't found any civility in it yet. I have. Just I hate to um, bust your bubble, but but I have. You have? Sweet. Yeah. Well, okay, not not much on the interwebs. Let's put it like oh, that. Oh, on the interwebs? Yeah, I I found yeah. yeah. I found a lot of good stuff on the interwebs. It's a balance to it. You know? Oh it's, it's, all depends on how you look, huh? Well, or you, you gotta say impossible. No, you have to say no to thugs. And, Oh, you know, it's no hard. Hugs. Say okay. no. No, I refuse to do that. One must have boundaries and enforce them. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Pop a pop a pot sauce is here. As well. Speaking of holes of holes of holes. Hi, sock puppet. Hi, it's awesome. <laughs> we got an SLC Mike Hey, here. Mikey. Hey, Mike. He's in Utah. He's, he's <laughs> up well there with the swarm. And a smartaz. The smartest taz in the whole wide world. Um, oh, the man is a camel. Oh, my God. I don't want to know about camel's balls. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the chat, and it's like, oh, about camel's balls. Just consider wow. the source of the information, and it tells you what you I'm- need to know. Yoinks. In any case, hi, holiest Roger ever. Holiest, holiest Roger, Roger ever. Roger ever. Does that mean he's holy? Or I have no holy? idea. You I'm call it. To figure that one out yet. You're the umpire here on this one. You call it how you see it, little missy. And, oh, I'll, and I'll just disagree I'm, with whatever you say. Okay, I, that works. Yeah. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Z-Pigs. Z picks, mm-hmm. see, and it's one fourteen my time. So hey, I got that done in eleven minutes. Booyah! Yeah, oh. booyah! And remember when I used to make you drag it out and it take twenty? The good old days when I was a I control know, good freak. Good old days were. 
when I had to run the dork table like a shit, you know, like a well-oiled machine. Speaking of well-oiled machines, apparently there were 357 crashes statewide yeah. in uh, Minneapolis or in Minnesota. Wait. Minnesota. Okay. Them there people up there, they don't know how to drive. And then Grimmy oh. said something about hard to drive in, and, and when I saw that, it was like, that's a hard drive? What? So, moving along. Sorry. Oh, well, moving yeah. along, you know, I was, I was listening to the uh, Freakers Ball this afternoon with Circle. And, uh, uh-huh. well, they were doing the, the prediction things. And some of my predictions were crap, you know, just kind of joking about something. But one of them that I made was the federal government will fuck up cannabis again, continue to fuck up cannabis. And what probably the people on the Internet haven't seen yet is while the impeachment hearings were going on, they had a skeleton crew in. If this isn't a meme on the Internet, if this is indeed the truth, the federal uh, decided to control the pot stuff again, not to let go of it. It's not going to be up to the individual state like it should be. They're going to still intervene. Because they can. Because, because there's money in it. No. Because. Well, yeah, there's money in it, but, money. you know, a lot of people don't realize. And I just I saw a thing on Twitter earlier today, and so I had to get out my little The Heritage Foundation pocket declaration of independence and constitution of the United States. And I read Article 10. And then I actually, well, I actually typed in Article 10 Mm -hmm. of the Constitution of the United States. I think it was Article 10. I think. Okay. Something like that. Or maybe it was an amendment. Maybe it was a, no, it was a 10th Amendment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh Where the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people, which basically says that first is home rule. Yes, state trumps Fed. Yes. But over the years. And individual trumps state. But over the years, what has happened? The public has. It has gotten topsy-turvied. Well, no, we got 9-11. And they took all that crap and they put it on a shelf oh. and said, oh, they no, they no, 9-11 was just the icing on the cake. Wow. Well, see, okay. It's hard. It's hard for me to identify with that idea because I was, when I was living there at 9-11, I was driving without a driver's license, didn't have a regular, uh, an occupation, so to speak, lived in a really nice place. <laughs> I mean, I had all the trappings of life. You know, but no responsibility to it. So, hmm. Excuse me. I think that that mentality that I had kept me kind of in the dark on how society was being manipulated because they weren't getting me. They might have been getting everybody else, but I was kind of blind to that. I was living my own thing, avoiding it all. So there was never a conversation. Part part of what I think, well, and it's when when we got the... The uh, what was it? The federal um, when the uh, they did the education thing. Whatever. What is that? The well, give me a year. I Department be... of Education. Oh, when, when that came into being. Oh yeah. That that's when things real because then they controlled what was mm-hmm. with every school. I thought know, it was Reagan. Was Re- Reagan was the first one to take it over on paper, but it was a Jimmy Carter project. Project. Was it a Jimmy Carter or yeah, was that a ni- yeah. Tricky Dicky Nicky? Well, no, nah, Tricky Dicky, I don't think, ah, fuck, he was so big into finance, I don't think he'd give a shit about the kids. He was more into, into stuff that had to do with money, like sugar. They put, they replaced sugar with that high fructose shit in his era. So uh, my my history with what I know of Nixon is, he was more into funding and money things and Carter was a humanitarian, so it made more sense to believe, for me, that, yeah, it was a Carter thing to, to inter, intervene at a federal level and take over the uh, education. And it was a nice guy instead of a fucking, you know, nasty Nixon. It was smiling Jimmy C. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. The peanut grower. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. Ford was and only. Huh, well, now look at all the peanut allergies we have around the country. Yeah. I wonder if people are allergic to the shit Jimmy Carter did. 
Oh, okay. ha, ha. yeah, a lot of people are. I yeah, believe, are. and I believe that's another byproduct of uh, the inoculations. And if, oh, you, yeah. if you want information on that, if you're listening to the po- program right now, whatever, uh, go to ucy.com and look for Clint Richardson. Guy has a hell of a way of explaining the way he sees this. That's how I'd promote him. And I tend to agree with a lot of what he says. And But now he goes, he's a big Bible guy too, but not in the sense of as a religious, you know, quoting it shit, but as a way of making points of what he understands metaphors to mean. Well, and I think that's helpful because there's so many people out there that are biblically minded. You know, it's gospel yeah. truth. Yeah. It's yeah. in the Bible, yeah. by my bull. Um, but, <laughs> you funny girl. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. You know, <laughs> by my <there's>, bull. <laughs> yeah. well, yeah. Thank you, so um, sneaky woman. I caught that one. I'm retarded. That. That's right. I see how you is. Yeah, I'm sitting here on you know a chair. The, okay, Grammy. <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. 1980. Yeah. Oh, 1980 was the May 4th of right. 1980. But nothing begins in the year they're initiated because that's government. No. That's taken 20 fucking years to really get it going. But the well, it's like Obamacare. It got voted in. You know, we must pass it before we can read it. Oh we yeah, Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I remember that it got voted in and then it didn't kick in until the year after, you know, when or the same year that Dangleberry was inaugurated for the second time. That's when Obamacare kicked in. And so it it, it gave all of the insurance companies all of this time to gradually cut back what they covered and gradually increase what they charged you and gradually increase what the um, deductible was going to be. And then they all along they could say, well, it's because of Obamacare. But Obamacare hasn't kicked in yet, but we've got to prepare ourselves. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> wow. How about I just grab each one of my cheeks and just bend over and spread them, okay? Would that make it easier for you? I mm. Shouldn't you ask your husband first? <laughs> I mean, never mind. I don't know. He might just smile. <laughs> hey, Wayne, how you doing? <laughs> Poor Wayne. <laughs> oh, he puts up with me. Bless I, his heart. I, I would assume you're still alive. That's true. It's not like this That's just true. happened the other day. This has been going on uh, no. for quite some time, little Missy. <laughs> uh, I know, I know, and he just keeps laughing at me. <laughs> he's got a great sense of humor. Yes, anyway, he does. Bless his heart. It, it, too bad he's not a radio character. We drag him on here and make him expose himself to the public. Eek! Oh, ooh. <laughs> hey, never mind. <laughs> so I got another another gripe complaint America thing to bring up to you because I thought that the Virginia gun law things that they were making memes about, you know, the future, this could happen if they do this and if they do that. And apparently the governor of Virginia, the present day sitting guy, is threatening the public with everything that I'm reading about gun laws and using the military to enforce collecting guns if people blah, 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 blah. And uh, they're bringing rights and all this kind of shit into it. And see, I started to wonder maybe we're just being played again. And then, oh yeah, I think we are. Okay, well, there's some people in the RLM chat who I trust their opinions about stuff like this. And you know, I asked, is this just memes or is this there any reality to this? And I've gotten there's reality to it. Oh, yeah, there is reality to it. He is doing it, and he's, okay, yeah. he's actually increased his prison, the bu- or he is wanting to increase the prison budget and the law enforcement budget mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that they can start um, in putting people in cages that refuse to comply. And I'm thinking, are these cages going to be attached to a hospital or something along those lines? Because those people that refuse to comply, they're going to make it messy. For you to try and get them in cages and I think that is the intent right there is to try and make it messy they want to start a fight so that they can go see see 
This is why. Once again, I say, turn your gun in because you want to stop gun violence. And by the way, cut your dick off because you want to stop rape. Oh, okay. and while mm. you're at it, yeah. why don't you just give them your car too and all the alcohol in your house? And then that way you can help stop drunk driving too. Really? Really? I did. Well, I don't, <laughs> I don't drink and drive. Well, okay, I drink water and drive. Ha, ha, but, ha. Or coffee ha, and drive. Ha, 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 ha. But, yeah, you're fine. You know, all these people, that, and, and it's like a statistic I saw on Pig Gazette mm. um, years ago where they said, you know, that 27% of all act, uh, vehicle fatalities are because of drunk driving. But what they don't tell you is 73% of all vehicle fatalities, those people were sober. Right. So, the majority, what should you be yeah. more afraid of? The 23% or 27% <laughs> or the 73%, whatever the percentage was. I'm not saying that drunk driving is a good thing. No, no. I know what you're saying is they manipulate but, the public with yeah. the way they express the information numbers. Yeah. You need to look at the other side. It's like... Um, Dr. Berkman, one of his videos, he said, um, what was it now, 20% of people with the flu vaccine or whatever have life-threatening adverse reactions, but 80% do not. And so you sit there and you think about that for a minute, and then you start thinking, wait a minute here. Then you think of all of these people that do not have the vaccines, and 90% of those people do not have adverse reactions, life-threatening reactions, to contracting the flu naturally, and 10%. But somehow or another, they spin it, and you <laughs> yeah. just kind of go, okay, okay, mister, you got a needle in your hand. Keep your prick to yourself. Well, isn't so. that the idea, though, to, to tell people what to do? Damn, oh, damn yeah. the results. You're just in control. And you can fight the law after you get caught breaking it. So you break the law first, and then if it ever comes around to you, you might have to face the consequences. But what average Joe doesn't understand about these laws is they were written ahead of time to protect the vaccine industry from people saying, hey, look what your shit did to my kid. Yeah. Just like the uh, 5G laws that they wrote in. Went, wow. And there's uh, two countries that will not put 5G up. You know which two those are? Uh, was Scotland one of them? Nope. But you had the first letter right. I'll I just tell you. I've only read about Israel and Switzerland not complying with 5G at this point. Oh. Oh. And, well, I yeah. know there's legislation coming up in, in several it, others. It's not going to matter. The laws were written already that you can't argue anything other than the aesthetics of the fucking thing. Health concerns will not be admissible in court. They already prepared this. I've been reading about it for a long time. Can't tell you the first thing I read. But it's not. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and there's and you know what country is, this is from? 5G, the tech from? Uh, from Israel, <laughs> they won't install it in their. <laughs> they're going to oh, give it. No, that's they're going to give it away. The yeah, they're going to give it away, and they're enemies. They're going to put it up in Palestine for free. <laughs> oh yeah, isn't that swell? Thanks <laughs> ever so much. Yeah, what was it? Farmer and I were watching the other day about oh, oh um, about some. Um, Palestinian, you know, the Palestinians were, were um, protesting yeah. the Israelis taking over more land. And so they're out there just standing there, minding their own beeswax, just saying, no, we're not going to move. And then the Israelis start shooting tear gas at them. So the Palestinians start throwing rocks back at the Israelis, hmm. which was an excuse for the Israelis to use deadly force. Yeah. Yeah. And I looked at him and I said, now... <laughs> Now, you do realize that all they were doing was just standing there. They weren't doing anything except just standing there and saying, no, we're not going to move. They're and defying so, authority, Miss Mary. Don't yeah, you get it? I know, but by golly, then that meant that <laughs> that gave them permission to start shooting tear gas at them. Because, yeah. damn it, you're not supposed to be standing. You're not supposed to be there. Get out of our way. And then when you dare to pick up a rock, 
mm-hmm. and throw it at me, mm-hmm. I'm going to get out my gun because gun beats rock. Apparently. I, I think the Israelis should all turn in their guns to help stop gun violence. <laughs> Wow, what an idea! <laughs> and, and then <laughs> yeah, to run for a public office, all the way up to, and then that way, you know, they can stop that too. Yeah, but you know, you still have to recognize to some point that there is opposition out there that's seriously real, because oh, these yeah. people are seriously uh, doctor demented. Well, they're indoctrinated into groups in. Education yes. and religion and all this crap. It, when where we came in, they hadn't got that kind of grip on us yet. That's probably how we avoided it. Because to this day, I don't give a shit if you got a gun or not. You're not going to use it, you know, unless you're either real close to me or real far away. And either way, you know, what the fuck? It's just a, just another thing, you know. How can it? Well. It? Um, it's not anything to be that. afraid of because somebody has a gun. It's the person holding the gun you got to think about. You know, like, I wouldn't want to be in a room drinking with me and have a loaded gun around because I'm crazy when I drink. Hmm. I've heard the horrible things. Oh, you, you know, you've asked for the damn thing. I wonder what I'll do if I shot you in the leg. <laughs> You know, in a fight or disagreement, something like that. Yeah. So, no, yeah. me and me and weaponry, uh, just, we're naturally just not, we don't attract each other, you know, just not for it in any level. And uh, people always bring up the defense thing. And uh, hmm, maybe one-on-one it would matter, but with the sophistication that the police have, you know, access to, the weaponry they can use... If uh-huh. you've got a if you've got a semi automatic, they'll surround you and bomb your house. And there's videotape of them doing it in America in the seventies when they had the uh like the Palestine Liberation Army in LA and then there was another one I think in Philadelphia. And they took out like six uh six houses of a block to get one one group. Yeah. You know, because no matter what you what you fight them with, they're gonna overpower you. Like the that bank robbery in the valley in the nineties, where the guys were so fucking well armed coming out of that bank, they had body armor and shit, and the cops uh-huh. couldn't fight them. So the cops had to go to the pawn shops and the gun stores to find better guns than they were uh, given by the state to fight these bad guys with. And it took them like forty five minutes to finally shoot one of them in the fucking leg and wound him so he'd fall. And then after all that was <laughs> over. His family tried to sue the state for not sending paramedics in to save him. <laughs> this guy okay, is stealing so did his trucks. Family actually, did he actually, or did the family actually win? Because sue, I've I don't read know. Win? Uh, what's a win? I was laughing well, I've read sue. different instances where homeowners have, you know, to defend their own home, mm-hmm. they have shot an intruder. And then years later, the intruder has sued them uh-huh. and won because... Well, obviously, those jury, the jury pool was, they got them out of the shallow end of the pool. Let's just put it back. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. You caught me. You're mid, welcome. Yeah, mid smoke on that one. Good aim. Yeah, mid smoke on that one. Um, but you know, when you were talking about all these indoctrinated people and all that other fun mm-hmm. stuff, that's, uh-huh. that's like I had, I had one of those aha moments mm-hmm. when, and I realized that everything I thought hmm. that I knew was just based on something that I was told by someone else that also thought mm-hmm. they knew. Yeah. And that's the problem with a lot of the world, as I see it, is mm-hmm. there's so many people out there that think they know, but what they think they know was taught to them by someone else who was also <laughs> taught, taught like that. that crap. Yeah. Well, my so indoctrination to to source, will kick the shit out of your indoctrination any day of the week, little missy. Oh, I know. There you go. I mean, you do realize that I openly admit to having that mental idea that I have my own fucking brand of indoctrination, too. It's just been modified over a lifetime of changes. <laughs> that other folk, well, yeah. other folk that I'm, I'm age-peered with, I'm not history-peered with, 
and they would look at some of the decisions I've made as an adult and gone and carried through with, and they go, you're fucking crazy. <laughs> and I would do the same of them. But, you know, that's how we are. We're indoctrinated to that. follow this thinking process wherever, however it's shaped and molded in us. And mine's just way, I don't know, what would you call it? I would call it freer. I'm more open to some things. And then once I make up my fucking mind about it, it usually takes a wife or somebody to, to talk me into it again. You know, but af after some point, I just won't. Nah, we're done. It's over. You know what I mean? That where I made up my mind about something and there's no more change in it. I've decided. And a lot of people don't seem to have that ability to say no to thugs. Uh, yeah. Have you? I mean, ha are there not people in your daily life when you have to go out into the public domain that you've known for many years and you just rather not see them? But you, you can't openly say that because there's nothing to, there's nothing to prove you're right. It's just the way you feel about something. <laughs> oh, yeah. There are yeah. some people that I, yeah, I most definitely go out of my way to avoid. But I call that the negative, too, is part of my indoctrination. The way that I see the negative is controlled by my thinking the same as I see the positive. Yeah. And sometimes I could ignore one or the other at will and go, I'm going to do that. I don't care what you think. <laughs> Hold my beard. Watch this. There you go. Well, and I don't, I don't necessarily, I know, there's a lot of things that I used to see them as a negative, as, man, that totally sucked, that was a bad thing, but now I kind of, of course, it's all uh, with the hindsight thing. Time but heals all wounds. now I look back wounds. and I yeah. go, you know, that really was a pretty good thing, because if that, that wouldn't have <laughs> happened, then this wouldn't have, and I wouldn't have learned this lesson, and it was a hell of a lot painless, less painful to learn it this way than it would be if I, you know, if I had kept down that path that I was going kind of thing, you know, so, and, and there are some people that, yeah, I love them to pieces, but I just flat ass, I refuse to, I refuse to talk to them because okay. they just make me crazy. And what I mean is, is not that reaction to behavior, some part of your, uh, like your, your indoctrination into thinking. Somebody got us where we are. We didn't get here alone. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, how much of it is yours? And how much of it was shoved down your throat till you believed it was yours? Well, yeah. That that does make... I can give you a couple and of I, examples. I'm, just, I'm to the point where I just, you know, go with mm. my gut feeling. Mm. If, if it makes my gut start knotting up, then I stay away from it. Well, the two things that came to my mind were the work ethic that we were all brought up with in the 60s or the money eth ethic because money plays a large part in your freaking behavior in life, how you treat other people, how you treat yourself, how you look at other people. And then when you base that judgment on money, you come out of it looking kind of stupid to me, but other people Cheer it on. Yeah. That's why we got a George Soros. Instead of everybody going, nah, fuck this shit, we're not doing it, they excuse it by, well, he paid for it, so I guess he can do what he likes. Mm, yeah, okay. well. Financial indoctrination to the authorita. You do what yeah. they tell you or they lock you up. Well, how, how many yeah. people and you know. You don't have enough, yeah. How many people do you personally know? That were ever locked up for financial problems, you know, financial reasons. I don't. Everybody I've ever known in my life had physical problems that, you know, they encountered the police. They drank too much. They did some pot, something stupid like that. But yeah. never have I ever heard a knock. My, my buddy told me, yeah, the IRS came to my house and arrested me. Tax evasion. What? <laughs> now, hear, well, hear I about it and read about it. Who, who, when, who does that happen to? I personally don't know anyone, but I think Farmer knew, knew someone that, that wound up going to jail for tax evasion. But mm -hmm. I don't know if it was the IRS. I think it was more of the state because the state um, actually charges more tax than the federal. <laughs> At least this state does. <laughs> oh, um, what a mess we're in. 
state tax, I know. federal tax, suck my ass tax. I mean, God. well, and that was one of those things that I that I was reading while I was perusing through my little pocket constitution, and and it's you know I read the little thing that jumped right out at me was a fair and a portion proportioned or a portion tax or whatever that. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to find it now. Well, Damn it. You know, how Damn do you it. explain all this stuff? If all the available money collected to this moment you know, at a federal level goes to just paying the interest on this freaking $27 billion trillion debt, well, where's the end? If they know they're in a, an unsustainable position, why doesn't anybody resist it? Say no. Nobody. They just... I and mean, at least if they do say no, maybe they're the ones that they're uh, taking to jail. <laughs> well, see, they did say no way back when it first started mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because cause the federal income tax was not properly ratified. No, it's not and even a law. There's no such they law. They started doing it anyway. And then when it went through the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court said that it was not fair and uh, what was it? Where's that at? But they get you on the It was the not uniform across the board. They get you on the and technicalities, so, Mary, of compliance. I know. And, so there was like three years there, mm -hmm. two or three years there, where it was kicked out. And then they slowly kind of snuck it back in again. And, How and far it's back? been going ever since. But, yeah, it's in Section 8 of the Constitution of whatever defining what Congress can do, Article 1. <laughs> Article 1, Section 8, mm. where the uh, Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imports, ex and excises to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. But all duties, imposts, and excises shall be uniform throughout the United States. In other words, everybody either play, pays the same amount, or it's not constitutional. That's what the that's what the Supreme Court said with the first when um, they did the income tax amendment, and then it kind of just snuck right back in again anyway because you know people were busy doing other things and. I think that was coming up into the Roaring Twenties, and everybody was flappers and yada yada blah blah. But they they snuck it back in, and then we had the Depression and all that other fun crap, and no, everybody was too busy trying to survive to bother with fighting them. Just like it is now. No Pretty much, yeah. It's that manufactured scarcity shit. I, I like the added extra. The people living in the streets this time. This this is really uh, hmm, entertaining in a sick, fucked up way. I think because see that's some more of that icing on that cake. Now what they don't tell you is hmm. it's not really a cake. It's a mud pie, and yeah. and they went out and they, and they got it from a pasture right. where a bunch of cows were. Yeah. And they formed it into a pie, yeah. and then the icing on it is the drizzly stuff from some other critter. Yeah. And so, mm, well, isn't that shit yummy? I, I'm just thinking about things like uh, the government can play games with your money, you know, tie up the uh -huh. banking and do all kinds of shit, pay you late and all this crap. But if you're late to them, oh, boy. I mean, oh, yeah. I have heard. Oh, yeah, the lie to you, but you can't yeah. lie to them. How did it get like this? That this is accepted now everywhere. You can't be anti-government any fucking where where people you know have a a society and win because the statists are they're convinced that their violence is what's getting them their way. <laughs> it is that be lie backwards. You know that yeah. whole that whole thing of there is an external authority that knows better. For your own good. It knows better what you need. And you blame that on the uh, takeover of the school? Is that I, or what? Oh, it goes it goes back farther than that. It's that whole concept of, you know, we should have an external authority. Someone else, whether yeah. by virtue of God ordained mm. or bloodlines or whatever the hell, yeah. somebody else knows what's best for you. Somebody else should be in a position to make decisions 
for you on your behalf. Mm. And that goes back centuries. Oh, right. Centuries. Because we don't know anything. You know? Yeah. And, and then people. But see, they, they just build on that. You know, but we, just incrementally, they build on it. But we individually prove it with our social expressions here. Oh, yeah. And But see, the. the 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 way that we're indoctrinated to look at at is backwards from what we're truly supposed to be reacting to. Cause oh yeah. The, yeah, it's all the weird shit that's been made common in the last fifty years that would have got you shot or beat up in in L. A. Now, if you don't do it, you're a weirdo. I know it's just an absolutely bass backwards world. I can imagine, in, when I was ten years old, if a if a guy had purposely gone into the female's bathroom and nobody could stop him. Somebody would have fucking stopped him. Probably five guys would have stopped him. Two of them would have probably given him a black eye and one of them would have broke arm or two. But because our indoctrination was different, we weren't open to being told you can decide things that are out of your control. You know, because I have my own oh, my own indoctrination and, about life. Yeah, and if you aren't accepting of someone else's quirks, mm-hmm. then you are the bad guy. Yeah, we used to and just to call them weirdos. You know what their quirk is. Yeah, now because there's support for your quirky group. <laughs> yeah, every quirk has its group. Radio announcers with horrible names. You know, name it. Yeah, there's there's support for everything now. You want to start? You want to start a group with me? Hey, I got a name for my call. I think it's a bunch of jock straps is what I think it is. Aww. Maybe that's what I'll start calling them now. Instead of calling them support groups, I'll just start calling them jock straps. <laughs> start. <laughs> I don't think the. Uh, I don't think they really had planned on that. Hey, what do you think about all that? Guys telling you know they're identifying as girls, right? And they're competing in female sports. You know why they're doing that? Because they can't win against guys. And so they say, well, now I identify as a girl. And you're sexist and homophobic and transphobic, and you're you're just plain phobic because you won't let me go and win against the girls because I suck so bad that I can't win anything against guys. What, That's what it is. What difference does personal opinion matter anyway when you think about something? You know, it's just you. So whether yeah. you agree with the group or not, does that really change whether what they're doing is ridiculous or isn't ridiculous? No. <laughs> we're, we're trapped in this new thing where you can't stop anybody from doing the stupidest fucking thing they can think of because they have rights. <laughs> it, okay. If you can't stop them, then can I at least be a vendor and sell popcorn and beer? I wish. But the same thing. Okay. You don't have a uh, freedom of speech anymore, right? I mean, this is a pretty much understood thing. You really don't. If you went out into the public and stood on a soapbox and said, fuck Israel, you would last about 10 seconds. Probably. Okay. So that is, as far as me and Vinny are concerned, the true meaning of freedom of speech is to be able to say the most ignorant fucking thing you want to say to any idiot you want to look at and not be you know, judged by it. <laughs> not, no, not necessarily not be judged, but not be imprisoned for it. Same thing. Judgment. Yeah, to me, it's all the same. Because I, I got my judgments by God and country. But anyway, that's the, the foundation of freedom is to be free, to be a rude idiot. It's not, Yeah. well, that's the wrong stand, but that's the common link. That's what we all seem to go look for. Not, well, freedom of speech wasn't put there in order to, you know, defend all the speech that you agree with because that's easy to do. It's there to defend someone's right hmm. to say something wow. disagreeable and to also deal with the consequences hmm. of their words. You mean I've had this backwards the whole time? I thought it was about the government not being able to force you to comply to their way because they say so. Words well, see, are, that's what it's morphed into. Okay, words are harmless until you take action. And we're not in the world of action anymore. We're in a world of word. Word has all the power in action. 
that nobody does anything. They just go to work. Yeah, and see, that's where the pen is mightier than the sword, because you really don't have to break out the swords or the guns, you know, until someone screws up. But, you know, all you have to do is take a piece of paper and put some squiggles on it and then have someone else that's got a supposed title that everybody apparently gave them this position because, yeah, he sounds really good and he looks good on camera. Mm. But they, he put his little squiggles on the bottom of it and now it's a, Wah! and so yeah. the man is mightier than the sword because now that, Wah! hear the angels singing that wasn't angelic but what the hell uh, <laughs> you have the angels start singing as he's signing whatever this is and now magically kazam all of those people that refuse to comply with all those squiggles on that piece of paper are instant criminals <laughs> instant yeah. and they are bad people it makes a bit of difference how they live their life they're bad people and that's the collective belief too Whatever yeah, the state is. says. I mean, I, I watch the RLM chat, and I watch it for different reasons. Right? Sometimes I <clears throat> I find mornings where I come on. I don't feel particularly talkative, but I want to read. And sometimes the topic is somebody's murder case, things like that. And it strikes me on how easily led we are to believe this horrible fucking guy that did this horrible fucking thing is going to be accountable for the horrible thing he did. And I can see that. You know, I can understand that. But I have also, in my lifetime, learned to not really trust or believe anything that I hear or read from the authorita. Right down to stuff like this. And when you, when I look at, like, they do these documentaries on serial killers and shit like that, and they interview them in jail and whatnot, they always strike me as actors, over-the-top actors trying to fulfill a, a, a paycheck. Yeah. Because the bad guys that I've encountered in life that I thought were capable of killing people and shit like that, they blended in with everyone. Like there was just something I felt uncomfortable around, you know? So, and then I look at like people like Gacy and shit like that. And I put that together with it being possibly being a fraud because they demolished the house after, after you know, he was in jail for a bit of time. That, so they level the proof, like they did with the uh, Henry Holmes. Herman Mudgett, turn of the century, Chicago, uh, the, the hotel where he had crematorium and all that crap, and mm -hmm. secret rooms, mm -hmm. and he would murder people for insurance money and all this, that. It was the greatest fucking story I ever read. But they never convicted him in court of anything, uh, except for something he didn't do, according to the cop that hung him. Well, he didn't really do this murder, but... I finally got him. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, yeah. And then here we are all these years later and the building that would prove all this stuff to be true has been demolished and, you know, taken away. 9-11. Yeah. 9-11. Yeah. Well, I mean, why? All, all that stuff got dra dragged off to parts unknown. Hey, you want to hear the weirdest? I've even got a weirder example of this. Billy the Kid. Okay, there was a, two movies about him by uh, one of those Charlie Sheen brothers, whatever his name uh -huh. is. The one that used the Mexican name. But they insinuated... Oh, Estevez. Okay, yeah, but they insinuate in the film that Billy the Kid didn't die. He lived to be 80-something um, years old. Yeah. So the state of, I think, New Mexico, it's either Arizona or New Mexico, has the corpse in the ground of Billy the Kid. And uh -huh. when they wanted to exhume the body to prove the identity, the state wouldn't let them. <laughs> I said, no, nope, ain't going to do that. Because if you're wrong, <laughs> we look at stupid here. Yeah, and we have our story uh -huh. that we're sticking to. Mm -hmm. And it is now his story or history. We took that extra S out because, you know, we didn't want it to be that obvious. But... It, now it's history because we've taught it mm -hmm. in school, yeah. and yeah. so you must believe it, believe yeah. it. Well, yeah. How do you deal with your family? You know, like your kids and your grandkids when they when they finally realize something's been mis misrepresented and you know the truth. Do you tell them? It depends on which one I'm dealing with. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Give me an example of that. I mean, you don't have to use a name, just, you know, daughter, grandchild, something like that. And give me, tell me what you, what you would consider protecting them from at this time. Because some things are just horrible. How do you tell a child that the money's fake? What does that mean? Oh, here we go. <laughs> um, oh, the whole, uh, well, and it's been like in the last six months, the whole pharmaceutical industry. And I've been trying to get this across to siblings and to children for quite some time that um, – it's just been lately, well, like like I told you before, I think the last time I went to the doctor with my mom and my sister-in-law, who works at the hospital, mm. um, was actually questioning and saying, now we need to take her off of, and we need to stop this, and this isn't doing any good, and you started this without doing any real testing, and, you know, stuff along those lines, and then listening to the siblings chat, they're, and I really... I don't know if it was because I am so vocal about it and saying, man, seriously, you want to do that? Do you know that? And then I'd start giving them things to look up for themselves. Because if you just tell someone something, they'll go, oh, yeah, right. There she goes again, <laughs> ranting. So I just put the links out there. Put the oh. links out there. Give them the articles. You know, look, give yeah. them the studies. And tell them, hey, you know, it's up to you. You do the research. I'm not going to tell you because you'll just roll your eyes at me. Right. Say, there she goes, off on a tangent again. But, you know, the last few months, it has, it's really surprised me, the turnaround. Yeah. And uh, actually with one of my daughters, a real turnaround. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> well, both of the daughters, but one of them had a bigger scare than the other one. Uh -oh. But both of them are now... You know, mom, what oil? Yeah, good, uh, good, good, good. You yeah. know, stuff along those lines. So well, it's hard and, to teach people that the old shit that we've been swayed away from is really what's good, and what we've been led to is the end. Hmm? Yeah, and you know, gloating over it or anything like that. Now, with some of my siblings, I go, "Didn't I tell you?" Oh, that? yeah. You know, but <clears throat> other than that, it's like you have that little inside knowing look mm -hmm. and the little inside smile but you go oh sure honey here let me look this up here i'll get that information for you or mm -hmm. go to this place and you will find all kinds of information well shouldn't it be common sense though that the way that you defend yourself from an illness with a, a shot is by getting a, a dose of that illness to so that your body will build a resistance to the penetrating, you know, invasion. Because that's what it is. Your body's getting this fucking jab, right? And you're, hey, there's a needle. Get the white cells out there and protect me. And then all the yeah, chaos see, what begins. People don't, what people don't realize is that's going directly into your bloodstream as opposed to a natural mm -hmm. virus. Right. You know, or what they call a wild virus. And an incubation um, period, too. As, yeah. Instead and of instant you know, fucking boom. Well, your body, you either take it in, you know, through breathing or through eating something. And so it's got to make it through all kinds of systems in your body when you breathe it in. And those systems are to uh, block those things from getting in and attacking the body or mm. help to to clean the body of those things like your respiratory system. And, you know, you breathe in through your nose and, and stuff gets caught in the nose hairs yeah. and then it's in the sinus, stuff like that. Yeah. Or if you ingest stuff, yeah. then it's got to make it all the way through the digestive system before it gets into your bloodstream. But no, they take this stuff with the neurotoxins, mm -hmm. with the formaldehyde, with the mercury yeah. or thimerosal is what they call it now. But, they inject that directly into, into your you. bloodstream. Yeah. And they do this to newborn babies. Insane. And then people wonder why the United States has such a high infant mortality rate. Duh. I know. It's crazy. Well, you know what? I have still got great memories of uneducated people in the arts of the drug world telling me all about the dangers of heroin. And you know what? Most people don't even know if there's more than one way to use the heroin. You don't have to inject it into your body through the needle. 
there is many, many other ways to enjoy the luxuries of the drug. Huh. Just like See, smoking just... weed. You don't have to smoke weed. You can make it in your food. You can make drinks out of it. You can do a lot of things. You can make a suppository, stuff it up your butt if you want to. And it's just the ignorance of, you know, the indoctrinated warriors for the drug war when they don't really know what they're, they only know parts of it. You know, most people in their right mind doesn't mean you won't experiment with drugs, okay? It's a percentage of us that will, there's nine out of ten people will say no to just about anything that you think of. And there's that one, one out of ten that goes, well, I'll try that. See? It's nature. It's not, it's not law. It's not right or wrong or any of that shit. It's the way we are. And some folk will well, we just... we are inquisitive critters, yes. No, some people just take people's words for things so they have to look for their self. Okay? I see well, pictures you... of the old guys in Afghanistan 10 years ago sitting in the street smoking the, um, heroin. Mm-hmm. And their fingers are just freaking brown from, you know, because if you smoke rollies, you know that that nicotine gets on your fingers that you're smoking out of if you hold your cigarette. Well, the same thing, that heroin is, it's brown and gooey and all that. And these old fellas are just sitting there smoking their little stuff and they're not bothering anybody, you know. But the minute that an American, if you grew up in America, the minute you hear the H word, Junkies are going to come and rape your cat and dump your trash all over the place and stuff like that. Yeah, and junkies are going to infect my baby that was just born minutes ago, so we need to give them a hepatitis B shot. See, I, that's what I mean is the, the hypocrisy of don't ever do this, but we're going to do it. And you're going to, and if you try to fight us, we're going to put you in jail. So you, you can't win if you do want to do something. And you can't win if you don't want to do something. Authority is going to get you one hole or the other. So, like you said in the beginning of the show, where do you want me to bend over? Yeah. Yeah. And then one out of ten people will take it to the extreme of saying no out loud. And the other nine won't. The other nine are just terrified. Yeah. Because it... It, look at all the shit I've gone through with people that know me because I will not commit to agreeing that the world is round. Look at all the proof you have. Okay, I don't agree that the world is flat. But look at all the proof you have. Well, no, I look at all the proof you have. Okay, I look at the world that I see in the way that I see it, not the way you see it. Somehow, we're all thrown into this freaking communication shit and we're supposed to magically just get along with each other when we don't think anything alike. And it doesn't seem to work very well, Mary. <laughs> People like to argue and disagree and, you know, be different. Not everybody, yeah. but a lot of us. And then you get the radio people. <laughs> yeah, then you have these radio people. <laughs> Oy. Well, well. It's a hard thing. It took me a long time to get comfortable doing radio alone. Ooh, that was like my idea of giving childbirth. That was painful. Ooh, don't want to do that again. <laughs> but getting to the pregnancy was a lot of fun. That was the best five minutes of my life. I don't know what you're complaining about. <laughs> I used to tell my kid when she was like three years old, but she didn't know what I was saying yet. I go, baby, you were the best five minutes of my whole life. And she just loved that. Because of the tone and sound, you know. But understanding well, yeah. it, no. <laughs> I, well, it's like little ones. If you don't have a little one's book to read to them or something, you know, even just reading the newspaper. <laughs> yeah, or, with a funny or voice. The, yeah. Or the comic strips yeah. or whatever. You know, so long as you're paying attention and they're getting that stimulation, it helps them form all kinds of wonderful little synapses inside their brain. So. Now, is this a, an opinion that you were given, or is, see again, <clears throat> or is this an opinion that you came to yourself with by your own personal observations of the world? A <laughs> uh, little bit of both. Ah, I heard something about okay, it, and good. then I went, "Oh, so yeah." You know, if I didn't have a little kid's book to read, and I had a little one that just needed to hear 
Uh. And then I just got to the point where I just started telling stories. You know? So. Well, yeah. That, but it's like the dog. When Cirque's at work and I'm a home, home alone with the dog, I'll say the most horrible shit to the dog, but I say it in a calm voice. And she just comes over wagging her tail. She doesn't understand the words. She understands the tone. And there's a few uh-huh. words she's familiar with. But overall, it's just the way you carry yourself. If you're nice to the animal, the animal will be happy. If you're not nice to the animal, the animal will not be happy. What do you do? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like with Bubba, because he's always in the road, and so I'm forever nudging him with my knee and going, would you get your black ass out of the road? And he instantly turns into Slinky Dog. Well, yeah, because he's know, entertaining you. Now. That's probably that tone. Oh, yeah. and wanna, that's what I mean is, now, how come people don't get along like that? Why is that so wrong for us to like each other and get along when it's more attractive to the crowd when two idiots are fighting? That's what I've come to the decision. That's what gets the attention. Not when you agree with somebody about the color blue or who owns it, but hey, we're going to disagree about it in your knee. And that's entertainment, dear. That's what we've been brought down to, I think. Mm-hmm. Well, it's entertaining. I'm not saying it's True. not. But it's slapstick. There comes a time where uh, you need to to do what you feel like doing, not just what you're expected to do, you know? And I don't think we're all capable of seeing the influence we have on each other, you know? Or how it's interpreted to the person influencing. I think a lot of things are misunderstood, and then we don't realize that, hey, we're agreeing about this, but we talk different. Me and you came to that term a long time ago, but I've never been able to do it on the radio with anybody else. We always fight and see the differences. Uh, you're wrong. Uh, okay. Uh, well, yeah, I've learned that, you know, everybody sees things from their own perspective. And and I may not agree with it, but I've also gotten to the point where it's like, really, is it worth my time and effort to argue when I know I'm going to be arguing with a brick wall? Let them figure it out for themselves. I, what if I may you're plaster wrong? some graffiti across your brain, okay. but other than that, it's like... All right. Well, what uh, if we're wrong and, and the religious nutters are right and we're all doomed to hell? What What about that possibility? You know? It's not okay. likely. Well, but, right now, with as cold as it is outside, that would be a welcome <laughs> I always got insulted by the religious crap because it was always about punishing... God was punishing his son or something to me. That's the way I heard it. And I had an abusive kind of dad. And he was, anyway, he, he would use force to get his way. So yeah. I rebelled against that my whole fucking life. Oh, you think you're going to bully me because you're going to hit me? Get the fuck away from me. And after a period of time, I realized I'm the one that had to leave, not them. They were there already. That was their shit. I needed to get the fuck out. <laughs> See, if you don't want to be abused by people, get the fuck away from them. Yeah, there is that. Okay, yeah. well, now society has made the chain so short you can't travel anymore. Where the hell are you going to go if you leave? In my day, crying out loud, I was a kid and there was a whole world out there and ways to make money and all that shit was all taken care of. You didn't have to, you didn't have to worry about all this like competition crap that we're up to our eyeballs in now to find the best of the best of the best of the best of the best. You know, in my day, you find a truck driver that needed somebody to unload him at the end of the road, and there was your fucking money. What was the big deal? Yeah. Well, average Joe didn't go hitchhiking around the United States like I did, and I didn't know it. At the time, I kind of thought everybody did this because I saw other people hitchhiking. It didn't dawn on me for years afterward that, well, not a lot of people really do that. Well, you know, there's, and I think there's probably an awful lot of people that maybe do things, but, you know, they don't, they don't want to admit to it. Well, like because what? They, well, you know, like, oh, I don't know, you know, like people that, that have worked like truck wrecks or stuff like I have, I've worked truck wrecks before, mm-hmm. um, where you go and you offload out on the highway and then you offload it to another 
trailer when they come to pick up their load or whatever. I've helped work those. But some people look at that kind of stuff as beneath them. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, okay, yeah. No, I, I don't I don't really understand that logic in the first place. Something needs to be done. There you go. You yeah. just try to get the person that's the least disgusted by doing that is available. You know? Well, and it's like, you know, there's, okay, like people that work in nursing homes. Now, you have mm -hmm. some people that work at nursing homes that are really, really wonderful people, mm -hmm. wonderful people. And then you have absolute douchebags that work in nursing homes. And some of them, you know, you got the ones that are very caring, very considerate. No, they don't make a whole hell of a lot of money, but they truly enjoy taking care of people that can no longer take care of themselves and helping them out and helping them, you know, have their their final moments not be totally bad, even yeah. if they're, you know, Alzheimer's or dementia A little or dignity on the way out. You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, giving them a little dignity. Yeah. And then you have ones that go in there, make the same money, but, you know, they're like, take me, clean up your shit, beat the <laughs> crap out of them, all of that kind of I'm stuff. sorry, it's, it's like, that nervous laugh, yeah. I, I know, <laughs> but it's... <laughs> Too much know, TV, Mary. It's, it's along the same lines, though. You know, you've got people that they don't mind going and... and empty and trash. I mm -hmm. didn't mind doing that. I mean, when I was worked at the dealership, yeah. that was one of the things that I did. Yeah. I cleaned, I emptied trash, I did, but it was something different. Mm -hmm. And all in all, you know, it made the day pass faster. But I know some people that would say, it's not my job. I'm not doing oh, that. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. beneath me. And sure. it's like, really? It all plays together. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Guess what? You're somebody. Well, we all got our strengths, and we all got our because I there's certain jobs I in a like in a healthcare thing I couldn't do. Body fluids and me, I, man. If you show me it, I'm gonna do it. I'm vomiting too, so no, keep me away from that. Well, you know? and I understand that, but you see, you wouldn't go and try and do that, and yet there are some people that they will go and they will do that job because they need that paycheck. Yeah. And that's the problem with this whole monetary system is people are doing things that they don't like doing yeah. or totally detest doing, okay. but they need the paycheck. And so they do a shitty job at it because yeah. they still need that paycheck and okay. and people can't – I don't know. It's, All I right, think well, it's that whole monetary system thing where you have to have hmm. money in order to live, and it just – it makes no sense to me. Why should we have to pay to yeah. live on a planet that we were born I don't on? No, I can't answer those questions. But I, I wanted to finish my um, vomiting story with this. Oh, okay. When when I was in my thirties and I had my daughter, that child could fill a diaper, and I had never had a problem with changing her nasty freaking diaper. But I'm, uh -huh. but I can't, I can't handle animal waste or anybody else's. But that that kid didn't. That was the one time where I could put myself where nobody's around to do this but you. So you know, whatever your problem is, just put it off and deal with this now. And I did. But I can't do that with everybody. I could only do it with Bumpy. Everybody yeah. else could stay in a diaper or kiss my ass. I, there's no amount of money gonna get me to do that. But for my yeah. own. It was a, I don't understand that. It doesn't make any sense. Well, it it is kind of, and maybe it's because you psych yourself out or whatever. I don't know. Mind over matter kind of thing. I don't know. I, mm, See, I'd like to I say agree. I'm superhuman and I have these abilities that make me better than everybody else. And I think the truth of it is, is necessity will bring you to do things that you don't really believe or want, believe you can or want to do. And... Something about, I mean, I, to this day, oh my God, I just can't be around that body fluids. No, thank you. But that one period of my life where I could do it and I got quest, well, you say this and that, you, but with her, you're different. Well, what's the deal with her? I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'm, uh, I'm, I am like your typical mom that can handle, you know, like the poopy diapers yeah, and, yeah. and the throwing up and all that other fun stuff. But man, if I see a little one with the big ass boogies hanging out there, I I I have to go somewhere else. Wow! I have to. I'm 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 really I'm doing the whole. 
I'm really right. impressed with the Danish, uh, the Danish folk I encounter in this little village place where I live. They take their kids with them. They take them shopping. They t- and the kids behave very well. And there's a lot of kids that you know they're questioning and they're talkative and they're grabbing at shit and whatnot. Being kids, but they're uh, they're not unruly. They're they're not you know complaining and nagging and throwing tantrums. They're just like we were when we were little. You know how Pop was. Well, you act up in public, and I'll slap the fuck out of you, stupid. <laughs> so you don't have to be told that because you already know it. Yeah. Well, some people got raised in the last, you know, couple of thousand years with no discipline. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us with a little too much. Some of us with not enough. It depends on the person. Because my, my little brother swore up and down that whatever it is my father did, he we deserved it. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I, I think different, but that's me, you know. Yeah. So well, I, I don't yeah, understand. I, I grew up with a dad that was a beat first, ask questions later yeah, than a dad. I know, too, and, so. and I don't understand how they could raise different kids and get different results raising the kids the same fucking exact way. It, something about life that I've been taught. You know, I've been indoctrinated to believe it's not true. Most of the fundamentals that I've abandoned in my adult life are the very fucking foundations that I grew up on. State, you know, driver's mm-hmm. license, being part of the, you know, be part of the thing. No. And when I hit my late 20s, I went, no, <laughs> I'd be dead before I'm 40 any fucking way. I don't give a shit about none of it. And here I am, you know, but, uh. My attitude was, eh, screw you people, you're all crazy. Well, there are an awful lot of crazy people in this world, but, you know, when you live in an insane world, it's pretty easy to be deemed crazy, so. Well, what do you really think it is? A, like half? 90%? I think it's like 3 or 4% are completely fucking out there, and the other 90-something are just uh, surviving. See, yeah. to me, it depend. That's not necessarily the right question because it depends on what answer you're wanting to get as to how you ask. You know, it's like those data people. You know. Oh, like I don't know. I never encountered. Data. Yeah, never encountered any of it. I just well, read about it on the internet, but I don't take part in nothing like that. Any information they get from me, they take it without my knowledge. See, and and I just. Especially with talking with my eldest brother, he's he's a statistician. Yeah. And so, yeah, he likes to see the raw data. He likes to see the statistics, but it depends on the question that you're asking <laughs> as to uh, how the uh, how to take the answer. You know, what context to take the answer in. And yeah. a lot of a lot of times, I think they're asking the wrong question. Or I don't ask me what the right question is, but I think. The question that they're asking is not not necessarily. Well, maybe it's to get a certain result. And in your opinion, it's well, wrong, yeah, but it errs. It's right on the money. They're getting exactly what they want or they wouldn't do it. And see, that's where the manipulation of the data comes into play mm. because they will collect all of this data. And then, well, this really isn't applicable. So we'll yeah. throw this whole data set out. And, well, this data set should be much more important than that data set over there and so yeah miss mary you're fueling my phone to be aggravated (laughs) sorry well no because that's the you know it's that that mentality that you're defining that irritates me so much you know how come this matters when i say so but when i say it doesn't matter it doesn't it either does or it doesn't not dependent on your fucking mood and that's how I interpret that. Um, we're going to throw this out because we don't like it. Like when they did the Bible. These books aren't going to be burning these fucking books. We'll tell them this. And this is the story that we get. We don't even know if that's true. Uh, we don't know anything to be true. Ever. We believe things or we don't believe things. But as a group, this illusion of truth and that's never going to go anywhere. We're just being kept in constant freaking arguments. Yeah. Yeah, a, a state of constant conflict. 
Yeah, I like this Greta. Now the press is turning on Greta. Well, not the press, but the, the internet. The memes are getting nastier and nastier. And I I'm, find myself, I wasn't really uh, impressed with them in the first place. I was amazed that people couldn't understand. You don't go in front of the United Nations unless you're being promoted by the United Nations. This is no yeah. accident some little 16-year-old girl went on a strike. Are you kidding me? You, everybody else yeah. get arrested for being a truant. This one kid who's not going to go to school until you change the climate. I mean, fuck you. How ignorant yeah. do you have to be to believe two words of that? And this one essay oh. that she happened to write. Yeah. Was, yeah did she really write it? Please. Yeah, my suspicious bone kicks well, in on a lot yeah. of that stuff. But. If she's not going to school, <laughs> kids that are academic don't not go to school. They follow the fucking directions. It's the rebels that don't go to school. <laughs> see, and, and I just see, I mean, from the first time I saw her, I thought, oh, bless this child's heart. You know, because I understand she's got parents that are, which parents do that they manipulate and they they sear and they mold their children into the parents perspective their they're par- a family the of crisis actors of mary it's not a piece yes. it's fact but she she was brought up yeah. in that so she's basically <laughs> molded to that position <laughs> And there's a part of me that feels bad for her because oh. she knows not what yeah, she does. Yeah, no clue. Of course not. Just like us. we were. That's what I mean about the indoctrination. It's just, it's shifted somehow over the years. They change it. Each generation gets their little bit, you know. And then now it's this climate fucking change nonsense. But they've been doing that for how long? I don't know, 60, 70, 80 years. Where they wrote big you know, headlines in the newspaper, the climate's going to kill everybody. <laughs> Hundred years. Something like all right. I'm, I'm yeah, because in the early 1900s, <laughs> it, um, the I think the poles were going to melt, and then it wasn't too long after that, and then then we had uh, global cooling, and we would never have another summer, and and it's amazing. It's it's either Life or Time magazine that's always putting this shit out. Who owns those magazines? I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> Is it still Murdoch? I don't know. Murdoch was the big name when I when I, I was following that kind of shit. I know back in the early 1900s. We oh, were back supposed then. to feel bad for the polar bears because they were all going to be extinct before 1950 or some such nonsense. Well, and, William Randolph Hearst had a lot to do with printing in the newspaper industry in the United States and. Till probably about the 50s. And well, and Carnegie was involved in that mess as well. Have you ever been to Hearst Castle? Holy no. shit. This fucking guy but, had so much money, he built a castle on the California coast. Right? And he brought uh-huh. over all these European freaking uh, relics and statues and fl- marble floors and had them reinstalled in California. <laughs> because he had so much money, he could do whatever he wanted. Yeah. It was like Trump plus in his day. You know. Did you did you see that video I shared? Oh, it's been a while back now and that that one actually disappeared off that whole channel got deleted off of YouTube. Shock shock. But there's another one out there that's like two and a half hours long. A gentleman that gives this talk in 1967 and he talks about how they set up a tax-free shelter kind of thing. You know, after they did the Fed and all this other fun nastiness that they've done to us, these and they is the rich people like the not necessarily was it? Oh, it was Chase. That which one was it that was killed on the Titanic? Because oh, he was Grant, against it. There were several forget. rich ones uh, that were against what they were doing. Started with an A, I think. Titanic. We got some nerds in the RLM. Let's see if they catch up with you. Um, Anybody? But, I think it started with an A though. His last name. You know, like. Like the Rockefeller, a, well, yeah, yeah I like a, that. But he was John a, Ascot. They were and, against the people that died on the Titanic. Were against the Federal Reserve Bank being, yeah, indu- yeah, being inducted yeah. <laughs> again. But um, the ones that were for it, and once they got it through, then they set up this tax shelter kind of thing. So you now have the Carnegie Endowment and the Rockefeller shit. Yeah. And the Rothschild shit. And the J.P. Morgan 
whatever, whatever shit. And the, you know, and you keep just going through the list of all of these rich people, the Ford Foundation, you know, and, and it was just basically a way to squirrel away their money so they didn't have to pay taxes on it. But they wrote the rules so that they can do that. Once again, ha ha, it was put on a piece of paper. And so, therefore, this edict became law. So, yeah, yeah. Became and, law. See, and the laws are worth crap if they're not in, uh, enforced, period, whatever it is. Yeah. If they aren't enforced <sighs> equally across the board. Well, that's why I don't think it shit. matters, period, because you still do the crime before anybody can do anything about the crime. So whether you yeah. whether you write it down as a, it's going to be in. It's going to be taken as a crime, whether there's laws against it or not. Some things you well, just don't yeah, do. Yeah, it's that selective enforcement so, shit. Well, what I mean is all this extra regulations and laws and code, you know, codes and statutes, basically. Laws are laws. I don't think you need to write a law down. I think you need to write a statute or a code down so that you oh, can yeah. collect some freaking money. Oh, one, yeah. oh, let me tell you, I saw this link. I didn't listen to the link, but I saw this link about a cop. Uh, he gets some kind of call. I forget what state it was in, but he stops this woman on a bicycle. And she's, I don't know, looks like a 35, 40-year-old woman maybe, riding a bicycle through the neighborhood. And and he puts handcuffs on her and puts her in the freaking back of the car while he's checking her ID out. And the, the headline was, is this uh, an abuse of force? And I I thought, yeah, from the beginning. I, everything I see the American police do on links now strikes me as, compared to when I was there, an abuse of force. They way, they go way beyond what they should be doing. And they punish people that are, obviously, if you look at them, they're not guilty of fucking anything. They're not even probably capable of it. But he's handcuffing this woman for his safety and putting her in the back of his car because he's afraid of her. Well, then why did he pull her the fuck over if he's afraid of her for? You know, and it, the question I ask is, why the hell did he apply for that job in the first place if he's so fearful for his own safety? We're accepting this as normal. Well. Oh, there's a Grimner put up a link. He, take the mic for a minute. And let me do a little checking on the. Uh, he put up a link called Titanic Deaths. List of yeah. victims. I'm going to see if I can't find that banker's name in, in it. But I thought you might want to yak while I was reading. But if you don't, uh, I'll read and yak at the same time. <laughs> well, there were, there were a few people that, and that was, um, I saw something on Twitter the other day and, and uh, retweeted it because it was a plane crash. Hmm. And I remember... Um, reading about some plane crashes that happened in the early 60s around here that, you know, killed everyone on board. But there just happened to be a congressman that just happened to be hmm. uh, pushing against a certain piece of legislation that was a piece of shit legislation. And, uh, oh, darn, the plane crashed. And when I shared it on Twitter, I said, um, you know, they don't care how many others they take out in the process so long as the target is taken out oh i found your your banker was it ascot yeah, no or? it was colonel john jacob astor a s t o yeah i couldn't astor. remember it either but it's familiar now because i read it yeah yeah but he was supposedly against the federal reserve banking institution that we so lovingly hold today yes yes but well Apparently, yeah, so. there were several others on there as well, but that were. Well, you know what amuses me about all this crap at the at the end of it is you have all this evidence of uh, government tampering with shit they shouldn't tamper with, right? For, uh huh. Since it started, and uh -huh. people today are in the 2020 election. They're worried about re-electing Trump. Trump didn't win the first time. What the fuck is the problem, people? You guys should just be glad there's an electoral college to tell you, who to, you know, who's ass to kiss. <laughs> and and then and then there's that other bit of the illusion that billionaire, you know, 
Trump's a billionaire. Ooh, everybody wants to be a billionaire. Well, not everybody. I wouldn't want to be a billionaire. Yeah. Oh, my God. The hassles that would go along with it? Oh. Oh, good Lord. You know, the freedom I feel just walking to the grocery store instead of that. Yeah, you know, some some people they look at walking like some kind of punishment. <laughs> the only oh, the only did thing. Did you know that uh, Angus 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 Young yeah. that his name ACDC? Yeah, Angus. He's still alive. Yeah, he lives in Denmark and he walks every day. No, to I the didn't. Store I had to no get idea. his pack of ciggies. But I wouldn't doubt it. Mary says Angus Young lives in Denmark. Van Van Morrison lived here. I'm not, I didn't do this on purpose, but I'm following the path of some really great uh, entertainers of my day. Where, you know, we came to Denmark and met some Danish woman and went, hey, fuck it, I'll stay here. <laughs> this will do. You know, I, she says Roger Moore, too. James Bond. Yeah. Uh-huh. But, uh, well, he's English, I think, Roger Moore. Or he might not be. I, I don't so, know. Yeah. But the... It's just a coincidence. Life take took me down this path, so to speak, you know, and I just went along with it. A lot of times, kicking and screaming and yelling, I'm not going, but ending up doing what I said I wouldn't do in the first place, you know, to it, to make everybody happy in the end, so they would get off my back and shut up. And this is the end result. I end up in Denmark with Circle, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but none of the none of the things that I've ever really done in life. I didn't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I'm going to go do this. You know, it didn't really happen that way. It was just a daily following my nose through life to see what I wanted to do. And now I think I call this retirement. Cirque kind of got me on that. She goes, ah, you're retired now. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to do those things. And the things that I do, other people would consider torture, like walking a mile to the store. (laughs) And I, I live for it, except when it's below a certain temperature, then I piss a little bit. Eh, it's fucking cold. But it's always cold on the way back, on the way up. But on the way back, I've acclimated. it been in and out of the store. And forget all about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but sometimes people would go, I had a fucking poor guy that doesn't have a car. Oh, yeah. And when I see cars to this day, I just keep thinking to myself, wow, I'm glad I don't have to do all that anymore. Because there's so yeah. much work that goes into maintaining the car properly. It's not. Some people are just living that instant world where you buy a car and you drive it and put gas in it. And there's a lot more shit that goes, you know, oil and tires. And it depends on how long you plan to keep it. But, you know, things have to be maintained in order for the machine to perform. Dirty spark plugs will make a car go <laughs> instead of rum rum. And they've put the spark plugs in the in the car now, so that you need a PhD in physics to replace them. Yeah. Shit, and my dad sit on the fucking fender and <laughs> get my socket and you know there was four on each side. It wasn't real hard, and uh, there now it's wow, computers and what was all that fucking for to control it so people didn't see. The advances in technology has tied a chain around your fucking throat so you can't breathe. Yeah. Now, I see it like that, and I get called names if I talk out loud. See, and, well, working in the automotive industry, at least on the sales end of it, you and know. In the service and stuff, I know. Yep. I mean, there's parts out there now that cost more than what cars <laughs> Yeah. And you can't operate without it. You can't work on them yourself anymore. If you're no. ever, and some guys just liked to. Not people. Everybody did it because they were poor. Automotive is like a, it was like a hobby. I had grown up with lots of people who built their own damn engines and all this kind of crazy shit. I wasn't that mm-hmm. interested. But maintaining your vehicle on a budget because I was not wealthy when I was young driving around. I fucking <laughs> Gas money and a smile and some cigarettes, you know, and that was it. Go find some work or go, you know, do something. But uh, And that didn't seem all that strange. And now I look at life and go, wow, 
if I was thrown into today's world at 20 years old in 2019, I wouldn't last a week. Yeah. I don't know how to beg. <laughs> and that's all that's uh. left. There's there's nothing left. Education hijacked. Religion hijacked. Politics fucking long gone. Forget it. And those are the three cornerstones of society. Right there. You, See, and I don't think religion was hijacked. I think religion started <clears throat> out with the intent to hijack. Okay, I agree. That's the minority belief, though, Mary. The, most people have been indoctrinated to believe in this afterlife stuff so that, you know, they don't got to face what they're doing now because, hey, I can murder you today. Jesus will forgive me. Fuck it. I'm going for it. <laughs> That's what I see. Yeah. I don't know. You see something different. Tell me what it is. But forgive you for your fucking sins. Why did you just not fucking commit the goddamn things in the first place, you goddamn hypocrite? <laughs> yeah. How else am I going to put my picker in this 10-year-old boy if I don't sin? Stupid? <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Uh, well, oh, but I'm just showing them love. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. even groups promoting the pedophilia, gay pedophilia. Everybody's got rights, except for the people that really think they got rights. <laughs> well, everybody's got rights, except for the person that you want to take advantage of right now. And they don't have any rights because, oh, well, Lord. my rights supersede yours. Okay, so all the friction over all these last 200 years, America, whatever, has boiled mm -hmm. down to what we got going on right now is some law changes to the gun thing in Virginia. And there's people rooting this on so they can have some, you know, some wackadoodle snap and fire that first shot that starts it all off. And the state has been pushing for this for a long fucking time. They've gone so far as to stage gun, uh, what do you call them, gun attacks. Uh -huh. They've gone as far as to... Take a real gun attack, if in fact that what it was, and then misrepresent it to the public. So you don't know what to believe unless you're a statist, and then you know that the government would never lie to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> unless you're, of course, a Democrat, and everything they tell you is bullshit. Well, unless, of course, you're a Republican. Every, you know, it's either side is the same thing about the other side. Oh, it's, yeah, it's just a different label. That's all it is. You know, whatever label you want to slap on it today, this guy's the boogeyman. Tomorrow, it's the other guy. Well, what are the end results for an individual in all this society shit where you vote, you participate, you take part in all that crap? What are you doing and why? When the sitting politicians will openly fucking tell you, we don't use the public opinion. You crazy. We can't trust those idiots. We're doing it for them in their absence because they're ignorant. Yeah. For your own good. And yeah, everything, that's the blanket you should always be concerned about because odds are that blanket is coated with anthrax. Right. And everything is always told. It's always explained how wonderful fluoride is wonderful for your teeth. Bad for your third eye, but you don't got one of those anyway. You're just a human. You know? And when you look up the definition of human, I, I didn't like it. I, I was kind of upset. Yeah. Yeah. I thought the opposing thumbs, the ability to speak, you know, to be able to interpret music, and th the things that I can do had a value. But you know what? Not according to the authority. I'm just an animal. Here you go. Yeah, well, yeah. Some they people look are... at it and says, and yet we are, you know, we're part of the animal kingdom. Yeah, yeah. And Legally? maybe people just need to quit getting so damn butt hurt over some of this shit and just realize that instead of saying we are above all of the other creatures on this planet, <laughs> just say we're also part of the ecosystem of this planet. We're in it together, I know. That's that's yeah. that's where I've I've kind of got or finally gotten to in the end here is whether you like it or not, you're in this shit together. So, you know. Do the best you can. Sometimes, some days are better than others. That's all. See, and I think that's where a lot of people don't get the whole, the real depth of that. Where we, where we go one, we go all. Oh, yeah. Huge. Because, man, 
corporate lame ass propaganda systems going ape shit over that because Trump apparently retweeted something that had the hashtag WWG one G A, which is where we go one we go all. And they're freaking out because Trump retweeted something that had that hashtag on it. And it's like, you guys really need to stop and think here. Where we go one, we go all. Now, make that very, 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 very inclusive, not just your special brand of inclusivity, but really what the word means, inclusive. And and you might have to just stop and think for a minute there, but wait. You know, smoke would roll out their ears. They would make these really weird looks on their faces. Next thing you know, they wouldn't be able to keep their job, so they wouldn't have their paycheck, which, oh, there's that monetary <laughs> system again rearing its ugly head. Yeah. I can connect dots for years, let me tell you. I believe you. I, I don't really <laughs> doubt you there, little messy, if you want to know the truth. But uh, then know. again, you, you're you not like everybody else either, my dear. You know, some yeah, people... I, some people reek of similarity, and some people just stand out in the crowd, and you're one of them. Your opinions are very merry. That is true. I cannot, re- you know, it's like when I hear music, new music or music I've never heard before, I find myself, the first thing I'll do is notice, hey, boy, that sounds a lot like this band out of 1970. And every once in a while, I hear a song where I can't find anything stolen from anything. It's just like, wow, they put something together in a new way that I can see where it eludes me in, in a lot of other areas. The, the sound, I, I got that from Clint. He made it clear that stereo is a, it's a, um, synthetic. Okay, Although it sounds better to you, it's... Uh, it's a synthetic. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. it's man engineered. So you're you're getting pleasure, but you're being you're being screwed by the pleasure because it's synthetic, and most of us don't see that synthetic as an evil in this life, so to speak. You know, to give it a, a title to identify it with, to understand what I'm leaning to is synthetic is the worst fucking shit for us, but they deliver it to us like a rayon feels good to the touch that Mm -hmm. rayon shit Mm -hmm. but how do they make it what do they make it out of we've been bred out of curiosity to see what's the source of what what our pleasure is so they can fuel us with these synthetic pleasures and and they're good they seem good but they're not that's that's what i mean on on a uh, on a deeper level of reality in the human body these things don't work but we've adapted to accept them anyway. Yeah. And I think that helps to maintain the control so that you'll keep enough people out there bamboozled with supporting it to support it. You know, instead of 65 fucking million people coming together and saying, we want this dick to lead us to victory, 65 million people came out at one time and said, we don't want nobody leading us any fucking where. We're done. What are you going to do? Well, you're responsible for your fucking self. Leave it, let it go. And and they, what they've, they've been brought to believe through the media and press and all this movies is that we'll collapse. And the reality is the opposite of that. If you just had to depend on yourself, whoa, you'd be nice to people. Huh. You'd change your whole fucking behavior. You wouldn't be out there kicking people in the face because they're liberals in uh, Starbucks. You'd just you'd leave them alone. You'd avoid yeah. the enemy. You would find you'd seek your own. And that's what they keep us from, seeking our own, so that we're always in conflict with somebody out of our zone. You know, Yell, fight, argue, bitch, complain, blah, blah, blah. Love your brother. Yeah, faggot. <laughs> Yeah. That faggot wants you to love they, me. I know. <laughs> they they take something that is good and they turn it into something bad. Yeah, because you know, like, I use that as... Loving a, one another. There's nothing wrong with loving one another. Yeah. And then you take these people that go, well, I'm just <laughs> loving those children. <laughs> That's not what I no, mean. Because I use that as a I, derogatory term at a level that everybody can understand. But I don't give a I don't feel anything for the 10-year-old that got poked. 
I don't feel anything for the grown man that doesn't have the decency to leave the child will be. But it's a reality of life dictated by a power outside of me. So, hmm, not my problem. See? So I just don't engage with people I feel are threats to society. Fuck them. I leave them alone. You want to be a threat? Go the fuck over there and be a threat. I don't want to be a threat to no one. But you've got long hair and a beard. You look like a terrorist. We could use a guy like you and our gang. <laughs> Ooh, gang. There you go. There you go. See, our gang used to be little rascals. Used oh, to be fun. Yeah, yeah. Used to be silly. Yeah. Now our gang ain't. <laughs> what, MS-13 and I don't shit know. like that. I, I don't I, really I, know. I've read a little bit, but uh, physical experience, nah, no clue. It's too far gone. I've been here. I've been out of America for um, eight over eight years, you know. And even my wife still, it doesn't seem to translate. She still, you know, sees me as American because me, I'm American. And in my mind, I never wanted to grip onto that freaking crap in the first place. It was what they gave me. I had to. It was what I was stuck with. And then not learning the language. And to this day, I'm serious. I could never be conscious enough of what I say in public to say a Danish word where a Dane would understand what the fuck I said. Because I speak in English too much. Yeah? I'm not interested in that. So the result's been, eh, poor guy, he's not smart like me. Instead of, that foreign bastard won't learn our language. It's been, yeah, we know how tough Danish is. We speak it. We're smart people. <laughs> That's it. There's nothing wrong with giving somebody a little praise for being capable of something you can't do. Mm. What? Yeah. Hey, well, I'm, I'm not... Just... Look at what a shitty job I do of English. How the fuck am I ever going to learn another language on top of this one? No way. Well, it's like Confucius say, the man who says he can't and the man who says he can are both right. Tuesday night, I tried to do a show on the Black Laws link of uh, the interpretation of the, which word was it? Um, dog Latin. Thanks, sir. I heard her over the headphones that time. But yeah, uh, I was at a loss for the name of it. But it's about the origins of dog Latin through the Black law link and I found it was one thing to read it by myself you know it made sense I understood and when I tried to read it out loud on the radio I fell the fuck apart couldn't do it it was so confusing to me hearing it I was like getting lost in the definition <laughs> so the only thing I could hope for from that whole show was that maybe somebody to open it and look at it for their self and that, you know not use me as a judge of it but Take the time to read the fucking thing and see what you've come up with because we're taught one language and then there's this whole other language. How do you manage to progress to understand the original one when we've been using the shitty one for so long? And yet there's a part of me that thinks, okay, reality is basically a conglomeration of everybody else, everybody's perception. And so you have this Black's Law that tells you what these things originally meant or what they're supposed to mean, the hidden meaning, if you will, or the occulted meaning. And then you have the everyday usage of it and what the masses understand them to mean or, under, or think that they're saying. And is it really the Black's Law that is... is the base, or is it what's really going on, or is it the the mass understanding that's really going on? Wow! Just like with history, yeah. You know, you've got history where what may have actually happened, and then you have the version that the winners wrote. Yeah. Now well, that's the, always the version mean, yeah. that the winners wrote becomes the accepted one. Hmm. So, is that really what happened in history, or is it really what happened? What I don't think I. Actually, I don't really think any of that matters as much as we are indoctrinated to believe it does. On a singular, individual level, 
whatever your opinion is about something, anything, any topic in life, doesn't matter until you disagree with somebody else. And then nothing comes of it except the disagreement. Uh, hmm. Well, I don't know that anything, I don't know that it ever gets to the point where, or that it's always nothing comes of it. What changes? You know, you can disagree with, if you disagree with someone and you both start talking about it and discussing it in a mature adult manner, or even in a playful banter, however, but, you know, so long as you're not going, that's not right. But that's, that's what they're doing with these gun laws right now while we speak. Is, oh yeah, is they're, you've got they're, these childish freaking people yes, dictating you're putting the emotion into yeah, it but they're instead. dictating control over other people. It's nothing more than a power trip. It's got nothing to do with safety or money or guns. It keeps us engaged in this shit instead of ignoring the whole fucking thing and going ah whatever, which is what I physically have done. I mentally engage it. Because I'm still indoctrinated into being a part of it somehow. You know, I know better. My opinions don't change any fucking thing. They're just my opinion. Hopefully, there's sometimes they tell a good joke with it. <laughs> make somebody or make somebody think of something in a light that the day before. And then, hey, I never thought of that. Because that's what happens to me. I listen to other people and I go, wow, I didn't look at it like that before. That's interesting. And then I come at the end to my own conclusion. With the input of the whoever I listen to. Hmm. Hmm. But yet, it doesn't change my physical life in any fucking way, shape, or form. Laws, actions, wars, finance, all this crap is just crap. And I, it sounds probably ridiculous to an average person because they take life so serious, you know? I find myself doing that. And when I stop taking it serious and leave it alone and walk the fuck away and go do something fun, life is better. So, you know, it's just a matter of, for me, my success is in being able to say the word no and then living up to the word no in some physical way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause well, my, it's, you know, when you say no, you're putting out boundaries. Well, yes. And is, then uh, actually living by that, that means you're enforcing those boundaries. True. And yes is more like what people expect of you. Nobody expects no. I don't think. I think people, the last thing in the world they ever want to say or hear, and I'm one of them. I hate using it. I hate hearing it. But it exists. It's there for a reason. You know, use it. Use the tools available to you. And... It, you know, you might scratch your finger using the fucking thing, but you won't cut your finger off because you used it. You know, like a preventative maintenance kind of thing where you're protecting oh, yourself. Oh, you know? okay. So like, you know, turning your gun in to help stop gun violence. and. No, that's just stupidity. I mean, like, uh, like getting your hands dirty to do something as opposed to not getting your hands dirty and leaving it for some poor fuck to do it for you. Oh, because okay. Because you're, you know, like you said earlier, you're, I'm too good to do that. Well, laziness is the same principle to me as too good. I ain't going to bother with that. I already know every fucking thing. I'm a genius. Don't you know who you were talking to? You know, and I try to avoid that side of me because I'm sure I've got one. I mean, crying out loud, I'm just as fucked up as everybody else. I'm not better. I'm just different. Well, every, I, I'm my yeah, version of fucked up. Slack. Slackable. Yeah, well, yeah. but the, the I think the more people expect out of another person, then when they get that rough side, the side that don't shine when, when you're smiling, uh, they don't know how to handle it. It makes them angry, too. I think that's how I do it. When you're not responding to me the way I want you to, then something's wrong. <laughs> not just life is going and you're... you're uh, you're putting yourself too close to something. You know, it's called friction to me. You know, like if, mm. if me and you disagree, we do it with kindness. And there's never a, an underscore friction. Ah, look what you said. I never feel like that about nothing. But other people, they have that ability to, to make me angry about what they say. And I don't know how to separate who does it and who doesn't. I just 
there's different people that can, but what's the link? What there's no apparent common bond to it. So it's me interpreting information that I was indoctrinated with, and I'm sixty fucking years old. <laughs> it's a joke. Reality, this electronic reality, it's a fucking joke. And when I take it too serious, that's when I know I'm too close to it. I got to get out of that. Stop doing that. Hmm. Well, you don't think so? I take that in every area of my physical life. My wife will tell you. If men, if I say no, <laughs> that's it. But I don't well, like yeah. to. Nah, I don't. I don't enjoy it. I don't want to do it. But sometimes, for, this I mean, you say no to prevent something that you feel is not good for you, and then backing up with a yes later fucks up the no. So. It's a hard stand. It's hard to define and explain to others how I define it. You know, it's just trying to is fun. <laughs> Especially with you. <laughs> well, yeah, because you, you like to, and yeah, and with no camera, you, you still, I know you can tell when I've got the Bambi and the headlights thing going on. Yeah, yeah, by so. your tone, yeah. Well, I talk, I just talk in my own fashion because, you know, that's what I know. And how you hear what I say is what you hear. It's not always, it doesn't always balance for us. I don't know why, but, you know. See, and, and just recognizing that, that's something that I think a lot of people don't get, is that just because you say it a certain way doesn't mean that it's heard that way. Right, doesn't right, mean right. It's yeah. interpreted that Interpretation way. Interpretation is everything. You know, you've got to be in the right frame of mind, whatever that is to absorb new information, whatever that may be. Well, I, I guess we all suffer from some some point where we go, I don't want to know that. There's some things I don't want to I don't want to pursue the knowledge on them. That headline was enough for me, you know? Gay parade. Uh, yeah. And then not because I'm anti gay or any of that shit. It, I don't give a fuck. What I'm upset about is that for the last forty fucking years it's been thrown in my face. It's not like I don't run around going, hey, I'm straight. Want to see my wife? You know, so, wow, I feel the intrusion. <laughs> I, feel, I feel intruded upon verbally. And people interpret it as some kind of uh, prejudice. You know? Okay. Well, I'm like these little kids are getting their little boys getting their fucking fingernails done and shit like that, like it's some kind of cool thing. And I was raised with a motor, you know, motor engines and bikes and getting dirty and going out and playing and doing shit. So, what kind of world do you have where they're raising the freaking kids in California, teaching five year olds what hole to put their dick in? And I'm thinking, yeah. wow, when I was five years old, I didn't even know I had a dick. <laughs> well, see, and that's where hmm, parents need to stop projecting their own concepts onto their children and their children's behavior. Because, good God, I mean, I helped raise my younger siblings. I had kids of my own, and I have grandkids. And children do an awful lot of make-believe. Yeah, an awful sure. lot of exploring. Yep. My daughter's painted my ex's fingernails and toenails because they thought it was fun. It didn't mean that they thought he was homosexual or right. transsexual or anything like that. I remember those days when people, people could do a joke. People are reading entirely yeah. too much meaning into a lot of this stuff. Okay. A lot yeah. of it is just kids just exploring and playing and finding out what they like and they don't like much like um, what's that? Brussels sprouts. Gack. Yeah. <laughs> I agree, yeah. I can't bother with them either. But there are other foods that I, I can that you'll say gack to. And like likewise, I am sure. Yeah. Well, and I, I do have to tell you and Circles mm. that I did finally have asparagus one time mm. where it was tasty. See? It's it's the deli time. see, there's my delivery theory about life. You know, and that's just another way to define it. Thank you, Mary. Because uh well. cooking Cooking is an art form, if you think it through. Cause oh, yeah. Two people can cook the exact same fucking thing with the exact stuff, and one will taste different than the other. Yeah. Don't know why. Unless it's like a Denny's restaurant or something where they always use 
the exact I'm talking about two people's you you know with cooking skills. Mm-hmm. You know, one will follow the recipe with one leaning towards certain spices and the other one something else. And it's just hmm, it's an art. I I don't know. I can't do it. My cooking is not it's not bad. It's just not special, you know. I can make a meal that's edible, but it won't be something you'll be talking about for the rest of your days. Yeah. And see, that's where, and I remember reading about this, and, and the people that did it actually got in trouble and had to change the labeling. They they were making, um, oh, I can't remember what food it was now, but on the label, close to the bottom, it said, every jar is made with love hmm. as, you know, part of the ingredients. Hmm. And somebody complained. Wow. And I don't remember if they complained to the FDA or, or which governmental alphabet <laughs> soup agency yeah. they complained to. But somebody complained, yeah. and the people that were making this product, God, I can't remember what it was now. Oh, um, it'll come back to you when yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, like the next morning. <laughs> but the, the yeah. people that were making this product actually got fined $10,000 and had to change their labels because they couldn't prove that there was love in there as an actual ingredient. And that's how willing people are to go to hurt somebody else to gain money. Yep. And their intention isn't to hurt anyone. It's to gain money. They're just doing what they got to do. It's to control. Oh, well, maybe not. What if their goal, what if they're just greedy pricks and all they see is, hey, I'm just making some money. I ain't doing anything wrong. This, this is how it's done, son. You, it's like hunting. If you're not a hunter, then appreciating hunting would be difficult. Okay? Yes. If you eat meat, then you might have another way that you see hunting. Like me, I, I would that would be the last thing in the world I would want to do. But if I had to, to survive, I would adapt to that. See, I got that uh, ability to say no. Now, when the ability to say no dissipates and it turns into you do it or you die... Then all of a sudden, my no changes. <laughs> yeah. I get compliant. You know what I mean? I'll agree. Yeah. I'll work with you. But I have yeah. I have to have a personal fucking stake into something for my mind to change. I mean, as far as like, oh, everybody else says this. To agree with them is to be cool. Fuck you. I don't care. I don't care how stupid I look because I don't feel there's proof the world is round. Okay. And everybody's explained to me and okay I see your side of it you rounder lover peoples and I think it's a great story but prove it what is why in 21 fuck or 20, 2020 we're coming up to here why is it so hard to prove things you can't prove shit it's always this says and that says and here's my but no proof just words yeah Conditioned by freaking 60 years of written law and TV shows, you know, to accept this shit that we live in and not complain. And no, I got complaints, man. Things are wrong. Like this, this constant harassment on hemp. All that impeachment shit while the impeachment was on the news, the federal government just kept their stand on cannabis and hemp. They're going to still prosecute at the federal level. So, why? Yeah. Why are we allowing this little group of fucking, you know, pedophiles and fucking, you know, lawyers and... Uh, thugs. Well, basically, yeah. They're, they're nicely dressed thugs. <clears throat> are they? Or maybe expensively Yeah, because some of them, good God, I wouldn't go out. And, if I had that kind of money to buy clothing, I'd look a lot nicer than that. <laughs> My clothes would fit me, for one. You know, oh, yeah. but these, these, they're just, I don't know what they are. They don't represent me, but they do because America owns me. I got walked by, I got a guy rode by the other night riding by me. He goes, Hey, American. I didn't, it was getting dark. I couldn't see who it was, but I went, see American. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not like it's a bad thing. It's just that. No matter where I go, <laughs> guess what I am first. First and foremost, before anything else. 
American, yeah. even American. If, except in America. Um, Grimmy wants to know how long oh, we're going to be because it's after three. I'm sorry, I wasn't. I was just yakking with you. We'll close I it know. up. Thanks so much, Miss Merrick, for joining me on this dark tape. I just lost track of the clock. I was <laughs> yakking with you like, like we always do and forgot. Anyway, yep. we're closing up right now. You got any great stuff for these fine folk out there in Real Liberty Media for the closing? Um, no, not really, because, you know, every little tidbit of wisdom that I may have ever put out there, yeah. I may think it's wisdom, but someone else may call it bullshit, so hey. <laughs> Welcome to reality. <laughs> there you go. And thanks a lot, Mr. Grimner. I didn't even say thank him for the hard stuff he does at the beginning of the show, because I got distracted by Miss Mary. <laughs> uh, so I'll I'm thank very him distracting. now. distracting. And thank you a whole lot. We went over a few minutes. So it's not the end of the world. But uh, goodbye, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me and Grand Z at the dork table on this uh, 28th of December. And uh, I might do a New Year's. Let's see what happens. I don't know. I'll talk to my wife. She doesn't give a shit. And I don't. I might do an hour on New Year's at my 2 o'clock time. And if I don't, then I'll be back the next week. Or unless it's when. What day is it? Let me look here. I might have days. Anyway, confused. anyway, thank you, Grimmy, for everything you do, and thank you all of you people in the chat for listening in, and for those of you that aren't in the chat and listening in. Wow, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>